One of the most common things you will see in JavaScript is an if else statement. We use these statements to find out if something is true or not and then do something based on whether it's true or if it's false. So let's just go ahead and write our first if statement. So we'll do if, then basically a conditional goes here. Okay, that's what they call it, a conditional. It's basically you're, you're asking a question. So if um, one is greater than two, do this thing. And this thing could be alert. One is greater than two. All right now we can save this. And we normally would expect an alert to pop up, except we know that one is not greater than two. So let's go ahead and actually just go back here, clear our console, refresh the page. Nothing happened. So let's go in, change this value to three. If three is greater than two, let's refresh. There we go. One is greater than two, except we need to change our content in there. So speaking of content, let's actually mess around with our content a little bit and see what we can do here. We don't actually have to put in a number. We could do number value. So we could actually have our number value. If number value, which is 12 right now, is greater than two, we can write number value plus the string. So now we're actually adding together a variable and a separate string. And what's gonna happen is it's going to say whatever the number value that is currently in here plus the string. So it'll say 12 is greater than two. So we can refresh. It says 12 is greater than two. So let's go ahead and mess around with this a little bit more. Let's do, um, let's do prompts like we had before. So let's actually just mess with this one right here. So let's do number value two. So we'll do number value two and I'll do choose a number between one and a hundred. That's fine. And instead of two right here, We'll use another addition sign and do number value two. So now what's gonna happen is it's gonna say, if 12 is greater than what the user entered, then give this alert. Else, we'll copy this, paste it, and we'll just change these two around. So let's take a look at what will be displayed here after we saved it. Go back into Chrome here. All right, so let's just go with number one. And alert pops up, 12 is greater than one. All right, so we'll refresh it again. We'll go to 100. And 100 is greater than 12. All right, that's perfect. Now just to show you really quickly, it's just a string question that's actually not holding them to any form of accountability. So you could do, you know, a ton of nines in a row and then that's greater than 12. Um, it actually doesn't constrain them, so you have to actually write logic if you want to constrain them within that zero to 100 choice. So now we have an if and an else statement. Now there's something else you can do, which is we can do else if num value is less than num value two. This will still work. The only issue is now there's a difference with if I guess the exact same number. All right, so let's just test this out. 10. 12 is greater than 10. 13. 13 is greater than 12. Let's go with 12. Nothing happens because in this case, right, I can just kind of say everything else. I put down specific rules if it's greater than. There's a few ways we can get over this. We could do else equals, which means that if they're equal, we'll get this alert. But we don't really want that, right? Because you can, I don't want it to display an alert saying that one is greater than the other if they're actually equal. So the last one we could do could be the else statement, which could be alert. You chose the same number as me something like that, All right? So we have this if statement. We have right now it followed by an else if, which has another conditional, which means you add in another rule to see if it's true or false. Remember, if this conditional is true, it will run the code that is inside of the curly braces right here. Same with this conditional, it will run the code inside of its curly braces if it is true. Otherwise, it will run this. 
Now you don't have to include an else. You don't have to include an else if. You could just do an if statement. But this is typically how you will see people doing it. They'll have an if and an else, frequently an else if as well included in there. Now what I want you to do is go through, create at least five if else statements, include some else ifs as well, try just an if statement, create a bunch of variables, mix it in. You can use the variables you've already created in the previous assignments for each video and test it out. See what you can do, get it going, trial and error. That's the only way you're really gonna get this down and just practice, practice, practice. So go ahead, create at least five if else statements and figure out how this works and how it'll work for your future programs.